Hello everyone. Uh, it's Carr. That's my name here on YouTube. But uh, I, I urge you not to say my YouTube username out loud. Don't ever say it out loud, okay? Thanks. And, um, you know, if we meet, you know, in person, you know, if I make some friends, you know, and you guys come to Las Vegas, honestly, hey, you know what? If you, anyone who's watching this, anyone, I, I offer a, uh, a free uh, guided tour of Las Vegas from a third generation. I'm a, a third generation Las Vegan. And uh, so I know about the city, but I know, you know, where to go and, you know, other than the strip, you know. Um, I mean, you know, go, go see the strip. I, you know, do that. But if you want to, like, see real Las Vegas and maybe even, like, see some of the beautiful um, national parks we have, we have two up here <clears throat> just outside Las Vegas as long as you have transportation um, I, and that's it that's all I just transportation and maybe like feed me something you know like you, we can even go to uh, you know Burger King or something I'd be fine with that I'm a very friendly person and I love to meet people so uh, wherever you're from if you come to Las Vegas I know you will everyone comes to Vegas at least once in their life you know um, hit me up you know Message me on here and uh, say, hey, I'm going to be in town uh, from these dates and we can set up, we can meet, you know. Um, it's, you know, I love to meet people from other places. I'm going to be just as interested about you and your life um, as, as, as you are interested in Las Vegas. So, uh, you know, you can meet, meet Pex. Ciao, ciao. And, uh, you know, I, yeah, I am a drug addict, but I'm not... <laughs> I'm, I am not a criminal, okay? I don't, I don't steal from people, and, um, you know, I don't, I don't hurt anyone, and I don't even do drugs in front of people. Like, I, honestly, people, you wouldn't know I'm an addict, I'm a drug addict, unless I told you. Like, that, that's the truth. Um, I, I don't act like one, I don't really look like one. I mean, it's funny, because you think, well, what does a drug addict look like, you know? Anyone can be a drug addict, that's the truth. And, you know, I don't even need to talk about drugs either. Like, you can hang out with me for a day, and I would not, you know, mention drugs once. I don't, I don't need to. Um, you know, my life doesn't revolve around them. It's just something that I look forward to. And, um, well, honestly, right now, I'm kind of in a situation. And that's why I'm, you know, making a video diary right now. Because my methadone clinic, I've been on methadone for five years, like, with one, one like, three-month um, period when I, I wasn't, I had gone to detox and I got off methadone, but, and then, of course, inevitably, I started doing heroin again, and then I got back in the hospital. I mean, I got back in <clears throat> on, uh, I went to the hospital, and uh, I went through detox, and then I got back on heroin, because, you know, like, a month after I got out of rehab, I was like, man, I just want to get high, you know, because I hadn't actually gotten high in a long time, because when you're an addict and you do drugs, like, you get a tolerance to them, and in the end, you're not even, like, doing it to get high, you're just doing it to be normal or not to be sick, and, like, it sucks, you're not, you're not even feeling it anymore, like, you don't even get feel high, and you feel kind of miserable, because it's like, um, you know, you guys probably don't know about, like, withdrawals and stuff, but, like, the, the withdrawals of trying to avoid withdrawals, that's, like, the number one reason, I'd say, why people can't stop doing heroin. Because the withdrawals are hard gnarly. Like, they are, like, um, they're horrible. They're, in, you, they're incapacitating. You will, you will not be able to function um, with <clears throat> when you're in withdrawal, okay? So, a lot of... A lot of prescription drugs, too, have withdrawal, um, or uh, what's it called, um, ab abstinence syndrome, I forgot what they call it scientifically, but when your body um, becomes physically, becomes accustomed to taking, taking a substance, and, well, I can only speak really about opiates, so with, with opiates, um, your body produces natural opiates, they're, they're the chemical that's like natural kind of opiate it's a natural painkiller and everything your body produces that naturally but when you start putting opiates into your system like outside from the outside um your body will stop producing those chemicals naturally because you're you're giving you're feeding it to your, your body you know your system and uh so that means when you stop doing opiates when you stop taking the, the opiates heroin or methadone or um morphine or you know narco norco that was used to be lortab um any kind of opiate when you stop taking it suddenly uh 
you will become very ill within, I would say 12 to 24 hours. You become very, 12 to 24 hours after your last dose, you will become very ill. Um, it's flu-like symptoms, but it's so much more than that. You can, even a normal person can have like hallucinations, and uh, but it's like a it's like a really bad flu, stomach flu. But you know you you have you're you're sweating, but you're cold. Um, so like the cold because you're because you're wet, you get even colder, and your skin prickles. You have a, you know like you can actually see your, your goosebumps and stuff, and uh, and you are nauseous. Uh, some people vomit. Um, you know, it's it's like, but you feel like so sick, and you can't do anything except for get out of bed. But like, you can actually, I've I've actually like, you know, like shit myself when I was in withdrawal in the bed. I couldn't get out of bed, and so that's why people go to detox and stuff. And so if you say you tell someone cold turkey, cold turkey, you're an idiot. Um, that's like horrible to do. Like even even <laughs> even if it's just. Your, it's withdrawal, like it can damage, it damages your brain to just um, stop taking something when you've been taking it for so long. Like, you know, even a medication, it's, even a medication you're prescribed, a lot of medications you can't just stop taking them. Like, it'll even say on there, you know, ask your doctor before, that's why, because your body, um, after, I've, I've read 21 days of taking a substance um, constantly, like you get physically, um, physically dependent on it so you know when you're when you're dealing with like um addicts like like drug addicts um, or any kind of addict opiates you know it's it's you can't just tell them cold turkey because you have no idea if if it were that easy people would you know people would stop but you have people and it's weird because like people don't even know but like they think oh look at all these addicts they're so they're so weak-minded and you know they have no willpower dude you've never been through withdrawal like withdrawal is the worst thing ever like you will do things that are not in your nature like crazy things you might rob somebody or like sell your body or something like just to get money to get your heroin um, um, you know when you're sick because the worst part about withdrawal is you're so sick and you know you know that if I only had some heroin right now it would all go away and you'd pop, pop out of that bed and be able to run a mile or do whatever go to work so that's why a lot of people don't stop stop doing heroin because I mean look you're in bed you're sick you can't go to work and then you just take something then bam you're right back being normal so like I don't you know that's uh if only if only, you know, heroin, they legalized it. I mean, um, you know, like they did with marijuana. That sounds crazy. But the thing is, is like, think about it. Um, you know, back in the 50s, they, they thought marijuana was evil. They thought it turned people into rapists. And, you know, they, <laughs> that's what they thought about marijuana. But you know what? Now, look, look at it now. It's fucking legal in Las Vegas, where I live. So, you know, um, looking for my cigarettes. I got cigarettes. I didn't get paid until the third. <laughs> so, but uh, I did get my cigarettes. And they're my, my new ports. This is what I like to smoke. <laughs> um, anyway, so, so you know, um, I am 34 years old. And my birthday is August 23rd, 1985. Um, I've lived in Las Vegas all my life. Except for like four months where I lived in um, Chicago with a friend. And, uh... But anyway, so I'm, I'm pretty much stuck in Las Vegas, and you know I, I'm doing good. And like I said, I'm working on a book, and uh, you know <clears throat> I keep to myself, and you know I have cool neighbors, and uh, but I am I'm schizophrenic. It doesn't have anything to do with the drugs. When I became schizophrenic last year, I wasn't doing drugs. Like, but you're not going to believe me because nobody believes a drug addict. But uh, when I started hearing the voices, I wasn't even on drugs. I hadn't done drugs in like. I mean, like, sparingly, but not even once a month, you know? <clears throat> I would do meth, like, every now and again, like, if somebody had it or something. But it wasn't, like, a habit, you know? Like, a habit is when you're like, I need to do this thing at, like, so many times a day or whatever. Uh, but I was open to, open to drug use, I guess I would say. And, uh, but, um, you know, so, like, when I became schizophrenic, it was, like, you know, out of nowhere. And I had been on lithium for, uh, I was going to say 200 years. I'd been on lithium for like 12 years, and uh, I was on a pretty high dose of lithium. I was on about 1,200 uh, milligrams a day, and that's a lot. And um, 
but I had done a lot of, I was keeping up with my blood tests. You have to take a blood test every like three months and my levels were, um, were appropriate. But, uh, I stupidly, I, there was a lot of things going on and I decided I was going to stop taking my lithium and I didn't really wean myself off like, like you should. <laughs> so I, I, in like two weeks I had myself, I stopped taking it. I slowly lowered my dose, but you have to do it way longer than that for way longer than that. But, um, I stopped taking it and it was uh, February 18th of 2018 and I just, I just freaked out, man. I started hearing these voices and, you know, my life changed and, uh, you know, that's basically the reason why I'm making these videos is so I can kind of, uh, try to get it all down. You know, I said I'm a writer, but it's very hard for me. I have ADHD and so, you know, like I, I, I take Adderall and I take, um, uh, you know, but it doesn't really, doesn't really compare to the meth. I'll just be honest. Um, but I didn't get meth this this month so um i'm trying to just because I, I just get the feeling it's uh it can't be good for me and uh it's probably harming my 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 heart my blood vessels you know so um anyway i uh <clears throat> I, need, I need to drink some water but uh you know i just i wanted to tell you something see the um I, as you can see, I only have a phone. I don't have a computer, so I can't really edit my videos. And like, it really sucks. That I'd really like to start editing my videos and like be professional and stuff. But I've pawned like everything that I own, and like, unfortunately, I lost my computer. Even though I'd been paying the pawn shop like every month for like over a year to keep, so they wouldn't sell it. And but then I got put in the hospital last year, and my 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 family refused to pay um, that monthly fee when I was in the hospital, and I lost my computer, my laptop. And, uh, you know, it does, it does upset me a lot, but my mom said, we'll never pay anything, we'll never pay for anything at the pawn shop for you ever again. So, I have history there, like, there's a history with them. Anyway, so, um, but, uh, so, so the methadone clinic I go to, I've been going there for five years, okay, and they document, you know, I've been going there for five years, and basically I started telling them the truth. You know, like, I'm honest, that's the thing. That's what always gets me in trouble, because I'm honest, because I'll tell people things that are, that are true. And, um, you know, I, said, I told them I hear voices, and, and they wanted to send me to the hospital. And I'm like, why? I'm not, I'm not harming anybody. I'm not harming myself, you know? And they just are giving me a hard time about it. And so now, um, today I was supposed to go to the clinic. Of course, I go every day, except for Sunday. On Saturday, they give you a medication for Sunday. And I was supposed to go, uh, today's Tuesday, and I called up, and I was like, you know, I'm sick. You know, I didn't have anything yesterday, and I was, I'm in withdrawal, basically. And I said, so I'm in withdrawal, and I'm, they want to do a mental health evaluation, okay? And I'm like, how long will that take? And she's like, I don't know. It's going to take, like, an hour. I know that. But this is, like, a special mental health evaluation. Like, they're really trying to put me in the hospital, okay? They're trying to get me to say something that they can say, oh, oh, that's it, that's it. She's got to go to the hospital. So that's why they're making me do a freaking question and answer session because they're going to get something out of me and they want to put me in the hospital. Because um, apparently hearing voices is freaking unacceptable and illegal even though my voices are like my only friends and they support me and they, they do love me. They love me. So anyway, so today, you know, I told her, I was like, I called up on the phone. I was like, are you going to make me mute with you before I dose? And she's like, yeah. And I'm like, well, I'm, I'm in withdrawal, though. I'm sick. Like, I can't sit there doing a question and answer thing for, like, an hour. I'm, like, not feeling well. And she's like, well, I have to see you before you dose. So that's, that's how they, 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 they hold it over your head like that. Um, and I was like, you know, whatever, dude. I'm just going to buy some heroin because I'm not, I'm not going to go in and, and be, like, you know, sick and then sitting there answering these questions that my freedom is on the line here. Like, it's, it's that bad. No, it's that dramatic. It really is. Because the mental hospital... When you get sent there, they take away your fucking rights. I mean, you can't even have a pencil in there. You can't, it sucks. I've been there like 15 times and it's really horrible. It doesn't help me at all. Like, and honestly, the doctor that I always get when I go in, he's an asshole. Like he'll like cut my methadone dose in half, which is like, you know, killing somebody. I, I mean, I've had seizures before. I've had seizures when I was coming off methadone. Honestly, coming off methadone is way worse than coming off heroin. Heroin is like three to seven days withdrawal. Methadone is like 14 to 21 days. And it's longer than that, really. Methadone is like, you know, it's great for someone that's like real hardcore junkie and they like want to get, you know, used to like having a normal life. That's great. But like, you know, you get addicted to methadone just the same. And it doesn't even make you high. So like, you know, everyone's against, 
heroin, like, you can't be addicted to heroin, but you can be addicted to methadone. And, you know, coincidentally, not really, they make money off the methadone. So, you know, whatever, hang on a sec. That's my secret. <laughs> and, um, so I just... So I, uh, you know, that's what I, what I did today. I didn't go in and uh, honestly, like, if I, if I had it my way, I wish I could afford, like, some enough heroin to, like, detox myself. Like, detox myself, you know, off the methadone because it would take, like, probably an ounce of heroin, you know. And, you know, people get scared, like, when I talk about that. But the thing is, is, like, it's not that scary. Like, um, what's scary is, like, is alcohol like alcohol's legal and people drink like a lot of people drink and um my cousin was drinking and and like he actually died he was like 31 years old and he fucking died because of alcohol his kidneys shut down his liver shut down he died within like two weeks of turning yellow he had jaundice and he died like two weeks so that's alcohol like alcohol will kill you um yeah obviously i'm still alive and i haven't had too many like health problems i had one time that I had smoked heroin like from somebody I didn't know. I bought it from them and some random person. I mean, because I was sick. Actually, I wasn't even sick. I just was like wanting to get high. I hadn't. I wasn't even on anything back, you know, at that time. I just wanted to get high. So it was pretty stupid on my part. And I got this stuff that from someone I didn't know, and I smoked it. And I went to sleep. And when I woke up, my leg was paralyzed. I couldn't move my toes. I couldn't move my ankle. Um, I couldn't feel anything like below my knee and and my knee too. And it was like that for a year. I was half paralyzed. And I'm not, not, not joking, I had to um, use a, a crutches and then a cane uh, for like a year, all the time. I could not walk. Even in my house, I had to use a cane. And that was because of the heroin. Uh, I have osteonecrosis because of that. I have osteonecrosis in my right knee. And like, it's because I smoked this heroin that would, you know, it wasn't good. And there's actually been other cases of that too. So osteonecrosis in your bones, in your jaw, or your ankle, or your knee, um, because of the heroin smoking. So, but you know what my, you know what I say is like a solution for that. Okay, the government should make heroin and just, you know, regulate that. And it can be like a small industry, but see, it can't, it can't be like marijuana because you really don't want people getting on heroin. You really don't. But like the truth is that a lot of people are addicted to opiates, and if they weren't considered criminals, and you know, if if it was like you know, not something, like, honestly, I get put in jail, like, if they see these videos, I get put in jail, you know, like, that's ridiculous, I'm not hurting anybody, I'm actually trying to, like, share knowledge with people, you know, like, look at me, I'm actually an okay person, but I'm a, I'm a drug addict, you know, that's the truth, but, uh, I can get put in jail like that, like, they, like that, you know, and, uh, have you ever been to jail, um, you know, like, you don't want to go back. Like, nobody wants to go to jail. And the mental hospital is the same way. I don't want to go to the mental hospital either. Hospital. And, um, but, you know, so basically the methadone clinic is trying to put me in the hospital. And they're just, like, frothing at the mouth and, and like, trying to get me to say something. And uh, so I've been putting it off. And But tomorrow I'm going to go in and do their little, play their little game. And uh, the thing is, is that uh, they're, like, telling me, oh, you got to stop doing heroin or we'll kick you off the program. And I'm like, okay, you're the ones, you're putting me in danger, though. Like, because cause, uh, methadone withdrawal, you can have seizures, and, you know, you can have seizures. And I'm not in, in I'm not trying to get brain damage, you know, like any more than I already have. <laughs> and uh, I, just, I just think it's bullshit. It's just bullshit. Like, I'm trying to not to do cocaine. I'm trying not to do meth and stuff like that. But heroin is, like, that's my, like, backup plan, like, plan B, like, when I'm, having a big problem, you know, like when I'm like, okay, that's it, I'm gonna go now, I'm gonna kill myself, and I've gotten to the point, like that point a few times, and then I'll do some heroin, if I have money, or just try to get some money, and I'll do some heroin, I feel better, I feel better right away, so, and that's something, that, that comes from like, when I was 16, and I wasn't even on drugs, I had never done drugs, I was 16, I was in a car accident, and they gave me morphine at the hospital, even though I wasn't even wounded, I wasn't hurt at all, they gave me morphine, and uh, that was it. I was like, this is it. This is the answer. This is everything that I've been looking for. And no more sadness, no more pain, you know, morphine is fucking awesome. And, you know, I was like, that's it. I'm going to do this. I, I don't see like, I don't look at laws and be like, oh, I can't do it because it's illegal. Fuck, fuck the laws. You know what? Like there were, there were laws like made to uh, oppress people too. Like, w so how can you say one law is good and one law is bad? Like, don't, don't take it at all, you know, because, <laughs> you know, I, I don't know if, if, a lot of people, when they have a problem with heroin, like they overdose, it's because they 
overdose. They did, like, intentionally did too much. And, I mean, a lot of drug addicts are always trying to push it. I'm, I'm not. I just don't want to get sick. And then sometimes, yeah, I want to get high. But, like, look at me. I'm not, like, falling asleep and shit. And I just, I just did a shot here one, okay? Like, like, before I started making this video. So, like, half an hour ago. And I'm not falling asleep. And, you know, it's, it's just, like, I'm functioning and I'm fine. But the thing is, is, like, if I don't do... If I don't take, like, the methadone every day, if I don't go get my methadone and I don't do an heroin, I don't do anything, I get very sick. Like, very, very sick. And, um, I mean, I, I intend, I'm probably going to make a video about this and um, when I'm sick, you know. And, and honestly, because I, I want to start doing, I, I want to start taking methadone. Because I, I don't want to, I just don't want to go every day and... I think, it, I think it's bullshit. Now they're trying at the clinic. Like, all, all they need to do is give me my medication. That's it. But they make me meet with a counselor two times a month and, you know, make me sit there and talk. And they, they ask you these questions. It's like, they're just trying to, like, put you in the hospital. Like, it's like, dude, your job is, is to medicate me. That's it. Like, I'm not, I don't need anything else from you. And they're actually, like, making my life really hard. So I'm going to... Um, I'm gonna go in tomorrow and I'm gonna be like, yeah, I'll do the mental health evaluation, but I'm not going to the doctor. Like I have a gyno appointment tomorrow, the gynecologist, it's important. I've been waiting for like three months to get this, to go to this appointment and it's tomorrow. So, you know, I'll tell him that, I'll be like, you can't put me in the hospital cause I've got to go to the gynecologist. That's important. And, and it's just like, huh, it's, uh, it's crazy. Like what they do to drug addicts in this world. I mean, in the Philippines, they were actually murdering drug addicts, and the president condoned it, and nobody did anything, you know? But if they were killing autistic people, oh my god, they would have been nuked, <laughs> you know? So, uh, this world doesn't like drug addicts, and I don't, I don't see what the big deal is. I mean, I think, I think most drug addicts are probably bad, bad people. I mean, I've never really met one that's, like, good, you know? That won't, won't rob you and stuff like that. And, um... I'm, you know, a lot of them lie, and, like, I, I totally understand that part, because look what happens to me. I tell the truth, and then I get in a lot of trouble, so, and then people say, well, well, you don't have to do it. No, I think I do, like, because I'm not, I'm not going to get in withdrawal, and, you know, when I, when I'm sober, like, and I don't have that to look forward to, like, and I'm sober for, like, you know, permanently, I, I, I don't want to be here. I don't want to be here, here alive anymore if I can't look forward to doing drugs in the future. I don't have to do them tomorrow, I don't have to do them the next month, but maybe like a year down the line, just to know that it's there in the future, some, somewhere, you know? Like, that's like nice, exciting to me, because like, it's nice to think, okay, I'll have relief for a few hours in the, someday, you know? There is no, nothing else like that. Like, like, I guess it's like most people think of having a vacation, and you look forward to your vacation, like, I'm going to relax, that's like what it is for me. And, you know, people drink, and they, they kill each other, and they, they rape, and they, they do, like, you know, like, young men drink, and they, they get in trouble at parties with girls, and, you know, what do I do when I do heroin? I just stay in my house, and I don't talk to anybody. I think most heroin addicts um, would do the same. They, they would just want to be left alone, you know? And plenty of heroin addicts are functioning, and they have jobs and everything. Like, you wouldn't even know. You wouldn't even know, unless you looked at their arms, I guess. A lot of people smoke it too, but it just doesn't do that. Doesn't do it. Doesn't do anything for me anymore. Because once you start shooting, like you never really go back. But <clears throat> you know, like look at, see my hands are kind of fucked up. You know, these are these are track marks. Wait, can you see them? Yeah. That's pretty bad. That's bad. And, and I admit it, it's bad. That's why I don't want to do it every day. <clears throat> like you can see where I fucking just. Uh, you know, I've been, I inject in the same spot over and over again. That's bad. That's bad. Junkie shit. Not, don't do that. But, like, I'm not stupid, but I do that because, like, you can't hit a vein. So you're going to go to the place where you know you're going to hit. And, you know, it just, I mean, I am a drug addict. And, yeah, like, I don't want to be like this forever. But, like, right now, it's, like, the only thing that's keeping me, my head above water. That's how I feel, you know? And to have somebody, like, that I can't rely on, like, some random person, like, at the clinic... And they're just like, no, you can't do this anymore. Okay, all the all the police and all the fucking um, counselors and the fucking everybody that's telling me not to do drugs, where are they when I'm fucking suicidal and I'm freaking out and I'm like, that's it. Like, where are they? I can't fucking just call them up. 
That's bullshit. There's no one I can call. I have no one that I can call when I'm having a bad, a bad, bad time. Okay? But I have heroin. I can just do heroin and feel better. That's it. Heroin has always been there for me. And there's no one else is there for me. So, like, I think it's fucked up. Somebody that is not invested in me can just tell me what to do with my life. You know? I don't, I don't go for that. And, and I'm like, you know, I'm, I'm getting angry. And I'm getting real angry. And I'm, I'm not an angry person. But I'm getting angry because I think it, it's fucked up. Like, social workers, freaking police, um, counselors, everyone, and they're telling me, no, we don't want you to do heroin anymore. And, like, they're going to affect my life. They're going to, like, you know, take away my benefits and everything. It's like, dude, uh, what did I do to you? And, like, what are you doing for me, you know? And they're, and honestly, I started running. Lately, I started going for a run. And uh, that makes me feel good. I think I could probably start running, and that'll help me, like, get away from you know, doing heroin, and I have hope for that, so, it's getting real loud out here, <laughs> but, you know, I wanted to, um, you know, document, like, my feelings, and, and, you know, I have, a, I have a plan, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try for, um, semi-permanent sobriety, like, in the next, I was actually gonna start around the, at the new year, and I was gonna be like, I'm, I don't need to do it, but, you know what, like, honestly, just having heroin there for me, knowing that it's there, if I have a problem, it's, it's just the only comfort that I have, like, in this world. Like, honestly. Like, I don't have, like I said, I don't have a friend. I don't have, like, family or anything that I can call. Because when my, I tell my family I'm freaking out, they tell me, stop it. <laughs> they say, they get mad at me. And they hang up the phone. Like, they don't want to, they don't want to do that for me. Nobody does. You know what happens when you're depressed? You, you people don't want to be around you. And, uh... You know, I have a lot of extreme fucking beliefs. I, you know, I believe the world's going to end next year. And I'm the only one that knows about it. You know, that's hard. And, you know, if I'm still here, like, my birthday next year, well, I'll be surprised. But, uh, anyway, just, like, letting you guys know what's up. Probably no one's going to watch this. It's okay. Because I'll watch it. And, <laughs> I got to put that hook, that hook. See that hook there? That's a hook. It's a hoof. It's a, uh, uh, um, what's it called? Fucking horseshoe. I'm going to put it outside on, above my door. I got to do that. Anyway, so, yeah, that's what's up. That's what's up. You guys uh, have a good day, right?